So I'd like to welcome everyone to Investor Roundtable. We want your questions. So if you have questions for the panelists, put them in the chat room, put them in the Q&A window. And we'll... So with that, uh, Danielle, what types of conversations should entrepreneurs and investors be having that you know they're currently not having? People are having different conversations now. So I'll give some COVID context to this as well, because fundamentally we're not able to network in the same way. There's not that haphazard meeting, the amount of events that were taking place. I mean, you and I were running into each other on a weekly basis. So I think that has hurt the founders more than anyone because, you know, we've been networking in the ecosystem for a long time. So we know a lot of the people and we can reach out and we have those warm intros. But for those of people who don't have access, that access is even more limited. And so I think that there's a lot to be said for you know, doing that cold outreach on LinkedIn and then leveraging those kind of one-on-ones and those conversations to actually connect with people who you know you target and you know will be the right fit for you. So what I would say in terms of conversations that founders should be having that they're not having are to be a bit bolder around who they're reaching out to, who they know will be the right fit for them, doing their research and actually pulling in their network now on a tangible and tactical way, because otherwise they're going to fall behind. And I don't think that networking style is ever coming back. On a positive note that the world is more your oyster because everyone is virtual. So if you're reaching out anyway, why are you reaching only within your region or within your borders? So I would say reach further and research further and build your network further and don't be shy. Uh, Stuart, uh, what are fund cycles and why does it matter where a fund is in their cycle to startups looking for investment? There's different stages of the life of a fund manager. There's and the role and the job of a fund manager actually changes quite a bit. So when they first put the fund together and creating all of the marketing documents, uh, they go out and they start uh, soliciting investors to put money into the fund. So then they're in this like salesy kind of capital raising mode where they're meeting with their investors and they're doing the, the dog and pony show and the song and dance, you know. And then once they're able to secure the funding, then the role of the VC turns into uh, that of um, an investor where they look for deal flow, they perform due diligence and they deploy capital. And they try to deploy capital as fast as possible because money that's sitting in the bank is not generating a return because it's just you know sitting in a checking or savings account. So they need to invest in things as fast as possible to increase their internal rate of return uh, as, you know, as soon as they can. And then once all the capital is deployed, then of course they have no money left to invest. So pitching a VC that has no capital obviously is not the right time. Then the, the role of that uh, fund manager changes from an investor to almost like a manager of a portfolio or even an entrepreneur themselves in a certain way. Because one of the things that defines a VC as opposed to like a hedge fund manager or a mutual fund manager is that VCs uh, actively get involved in the portfolio companies that they invest in. So then they become, they take on the role of an, an advisor. And then, and then they try to grow the companies as fast as possible with the entrepreneurs and try to get an exit. And once they exit all of their companies, the cycle continues and they go back into fundraising mode again. And they'll be raising the fund number two or number three. And then the cycle kind of continues. So Alex, what do you think comes first for a startup? A community, traction, or funding? So that's a good question. I think it depends on the type of business the startup is and what the startup's goals are. People usually want to see, you know, at least some traction. They want to see that the entrepreneurs and the founders have done some work already to sort of prove out the concept and make sure that everything's working properly before they're going to toss in, you know, millions of dollars. I, I can't speak for the VCs on the panel. I'm sure they they invest on ideas sight unseen, but <laughs> for, for everyone else, uh, we like to see a little bit of what you're actually trying to make. And so in that sort of scenario, you can be building the community sort of anytime. 
uh, then you can use the community to demonstrate some traction, some interest in your product. And then that's when you can go out to get funding. Specifically with equity crowdfunding, having a community that you've already built becomes a massive asset. If you're trying to convince the general population, you know, for hundreds of people to give you $100 each, if you already have a community of, you know, 600 people who know about what you're doing, they've been following you for several weeks, months, or even years, and they're excited about your business and what change you're trying to create in the world or in your space, they're already ready and primed to potentially become your seed investors. So that's, that's really an opportunity that you can start building that social following for free, essentially, uh, 